Hello and welcome to the Mighty Oaks Show. I am Jeremy Stallnicker, the Executive Director of the Mighty Oaks Foundation. And looking forward to today's show, we have a very special guest with us, Matthew Marsden. And uh, many of you will know him or recognize him from so many of the things he's done. We're going to talk about a lot of these. Uh, actor, model, you have to say musician. That. It's yeah. all on there. Yeah. Uh, I want to say magician, maybe. I don't yeah. know. You can do a lot of different things. But uh, most recently, director, producer, writer. And we're going to talk about all of these things. And um, ironically, super patriotic, mm -hmm. even though a brother from <laughs> another motherland. Uh, right? uh, I've got this on. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said earlier, you have the best American accent of anyone I know. Because I've only watched your movies. So when you came in and started talking, I'm like, wait a second. Hey, what? Wait, where are you from? Because <laughs> you don't have the same accent. But uh, it's great to have you here today. Thank you for taking some time to Thank you for spend having with us. And uh, we've been trying to get get you in here for a long time, and schedules did, didn't sync up. So pretty awesome. And uh, we got a lot to talk about, new movie coming out, mm -hmm. and just a lot of things that we can talk about. Um, but let's start, uh, if we can, at the beginning. Um, where are you from? Family life. Uh, how you got into acting? Mm -hmm. And then how you ended up in the United States, and uh, we'll run from there. I'm going to have to just let me talk about me. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, you said if you could talk about yourself. Yeah, I, did, show, I did, I did, I so. did, I did. So I, I grew up, I was in a single parent family um, from a very poor background, um, raised by wolves. No, I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't raised by wolves. But I, I grew up on a council estate in, in the Midlands, which is, it's literally, it's, it is Mordor. It's like... Uh, J.R. Tolkien yeah. wrote about Mordor, was about where I come from. So I was a kid that I'm, I'm from yeah. Mordor. But I, I grew up there and um, I wanted to be a Marine, actually. That's why I grew up wanting to be a Royal Marine. Everyone um, wants to be a Marine. Everyone wants Even to be a Marine. Even the Royal Marines. Even the Royal Marines. Oh. <laughs> they're not Marines, but they're close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to be a Royal Marine and I had asthma. So, uh, of course, the, the other alternative career is an actor. Yeah, sure. Really. <laughs> so, no, a lot I, of people I, go actor. Marine, actor, actor, Marine. Marine. Yeah. actor, yeah. So I, uh, you know, I had a dream of doing it, and I, I always loved America. I mean, I think that's the, the that was the main thing that you know. I watched Rocky, yeah, and I was like, you know, you can you can become someone, you know, and you know, in the UK, it's more about like your, your social s status, mm -hmm. like right. you know, whether you're middle class, upper class, or lower class. And I was most definitely upper class, lower class, and so you know, the the realm of acting for the most part was really for posh, what we call posh people like people that have a better upbringing so but i had a dream and i you know watch rock him like, i can do it yeah and so yeah i mean i got i got um chosen as a model you know, to bring that up but for me it was like i had no way of paying my way through university or sure. or, or, or anything like that so i said you know what i'll use this yeah. uh, as a way to pay my way through and, and i did and um i did a degree in performing arts which is yeah. absolutely not worth the paper that it's written on <laughs> should have got a trade but you have but, a degree so. but but, yeah. I, but i did that and i actually left just before i i graduated because i started working i'm like you know in this nobody's going to go oh you have a degree in performing arts right, so i'm going right, to give right. you this job yeah, so sure. so i uh that's so I got into the acting, got into National Youth Theatre, which is, you know, the premier, like, youth theatre in, in the UK, like Derek Jacobi, Helen Mirren, and uh, uh, I think uh, Daniel Craig, is, mm. all, all these yeah. big guys have been through it. So so that was really my calling card that allowed me to get an agent. And then uh, my first audition, I got the job. And the second audition, I got the job. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't realize it'd be this easy. You know what I mean? So... Yeah. Um, so that was it, and I was on a big TV show in the UK. Uh, I went off there and did some music because, you know, I always thought I need to have as many different facets yeah. so that I can yeah. um, I can work. You as, know? A so if, as a performer, as a performer on the right. whole, because yeah. I never thought I'd, right. I'd make it. You know, right. I had the, I had a dream that I'd make it, and it was always to be in American films. It was always to come to America, but I didn't want to come here and be a bum. You know, I didn't want to. I wanted to come here and contribute. And uh, so I did a film with Michael Caine that got a lot of um, a lot of interest yeah. called Shiner, and then I came over and I auditioned for Black Hawk Down. So your parents or your family, your mom, mm. um, and then your extended family, and that mm. you wanted to come to the United States. Did they want you to come to the United States, or was that a um, that's a dream that you can have, but that will never happen? Or were they supportive of that? Yeah, I mean, my mom was always supportive of it. Um, is she still in the UK? Yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's one of those things. It's you know, you have to let your kids. You sure. Know, my my mum didn't live vicarious through me at all. You know, yeah. she didn't vicariously through me. She she wanted me to be happy and yeah. do what I wanted to do. And um, I think there are a lot of people. I, I think in in England they have what's called the tall poppy syndrome, where you know, because I always had my dream to be there, to be to to come to America. It was always the blue chip, <laughs> kind of like the gold right. standard. Right, right. Even on vacations, like Disneyland was always the gold right. standard. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I always, I always dreamt of being there, and it's kind of that thing where it's, it's out there. It's never really going to happen. And then uh, I pursued it. I, you know, I went in for Black Hawk Down, yeah. and I got the, I got the role, and uh, and that was really a massive turning point right. in my life. Black Hawk Down is an incredible movie. Um, I'll tell you, I, I'll show you a picture later when we're done. But um, my infantry battalion, I was with the First Battalion, Fifth Marines. And uh, we were part of the initial invasion into Iraq. Eventually, later on, we would be the battalion that went into Baghdad. So we're in the Battle of Baghdad, and and just an incredible day. And um, I had watched Black Hawk Down probably five times <laughs> before that. Uh, I mean, like sitting in the theater, sweating, like like so worked up because of some of the scenes there. And then we did several battle studies and read the books and and did you know, these big sand table exercises based on Black Hawk Down. So I was so familiar with the ski maneuver and who was involved and what was happening and all that. When we went into Baghdad, uh, we ended up in the streets, downtown Baghdad. Some of the streets were blocked off with tires and other things. And I remember in the middle of the fight having a thought, this happened in, in, in Black Hawk Down. This happened in Somalia. Mm. And those battle studies we had done and watching the movies, it, it, it's, it's crazy how it all just kind of comes together at a point. But um, I f I've always felt like I had a personal connection with that movie because of that event and what that meant to me. But man, what an incredible thing to be a part of. Well, an it's incredible funny, story to tell. Yeah, and I mean, it, and, and on the flip side, that's what made me have such a connection to the, the military here. You know, I mean, we, we um, I didn't know anything about the army rangers i didn't yeah. know uh i didn't know anything about like most people they they weren't aware of of that battle yeah and uh, you know we went over there and I, th this is the thing the thing that, that changed my life was we were uh, we were doing um room clearance because we, we did what they call uh, ranger orientation. They were like, it is not RIP. Do not say it is RIP. I'm like, the RIP, okay? I'm like, ranger it's orientation. orientation yeah. And here's the funny thing about this, tell you guys about this, it's so funny, because I was like, okay, we've got the hind type, right? We're gonna, we, you know, we're gonna get into character. And then they put us in uh, desert fatigue and everyone else was in greens, right? And we're walking around like, uh, and everyone was like, we were square bashing, everyone's walking into one another, like, it was kind of funny, but, but I, I was sitting outside and, I took it really seriously, yeah, like really seriously, yeah. and and um, so I asked one of the there was a ranger sitting there, and he must have been like twenty years old. Uh, How old were you at the time? I was like twenty five, okay. I think. So yeah. what was funny was in the movie, if you watch the movie, that the the ranger guys are all around like eighteen, nineteen, mm -hmm. the, the guys that played those yep. guys, and and the older guys played the Delta guys were were. Older, yeah. you know, 35, yeah. 40 years yeah. old, like Bill Fickner and Eric and, and all those guys. And I was right in the middle because I, I was 25, which was more towards the older, but I looked like a, uh, I had a baby face, right, so they, sure. they stopped me with the younger, younger guys, yeah. which was really interesting. So I was outside and I was talking to this guy and, and, and I said, so tell me, why did you, you know, I was being an actor and getting into character. <laughs> I said, why did you join the army? And he just, he just turned around to me and he said, for freedom. And it was like someone went, boom, just like smack me in the face. You weren't was, expecting that answer. I just never heard it. I'd never heard anyone say that. Because in Europe, it's like, oh, Americans, freedom, freedom fries, yeah, yeah, you know, right. and they mock it, sure. right? I, I never mocked Which it. Which is why they don't have it. Exa no, it's absolutely true. They trivialize it right. and they don't have it. They right. don't value it, right? And, when, and I looked at this guy and, and you know, when we're, we're actually in the middle of, Earlier on that day, we'd been doing uh, a couple of exercises, and the, it was the days of the pages, yeah. right? And, and the pages went off, and they went, "Oh, we just bombed Iraq, right?" And it was it was uh, one of the bombings over there. They I think they'd taken something out. Anyway, so 9/11 hadn't happened yet. Yeah, sure. And I looked at him and I said, uh, it, it, "It was just just you know when you get a moment of clarity." Yeah. And I went, "You'd die for me, wouldn't you?" And he just went, "Yes, sir." And I'm like, this is the greatest country in the world. These are the greatest. These are the best of us. Mm. And I, I, I want to just do anything I can 
around these guys. I want to become a better person. I want to, I want to know everything there is about this country where somebody's willing to go and die for me. They don't know me, but they value my freedom enough that they would go and die for me. I just thought that is just, just the most mind blowing thing that I'd ever heard. And, and, and it, I just, I was dazed, you know, I just walked away from that. And I'm like, I have to know everything about this country. I have to know everything about these guys and I will do anything I can for them. And then 9-11 happened yeah. and it was just like quadrupling down on that. You know, these, I saw these guys going, I'm going to go and fight. I'm going to go and fight. I'm going to go and fight. I'm going to, and, and it, it was just amazing to me. Yeah. And also I remember just seeing flags when I flew back in after September the 11th, one of the most incredible things, every house, even in the communist state of California <laughs> had flags right. outside yeah. their, their houses. And I just loved it. Like this, this just embracing of the fact that this is the greatest country on the planet. I, I loved it. Yeah. I just, uh, and there's a freedom to that as well. You know what I mean? That must've been lying dormant somewhere, right? I mean, you came to the United States for job opportunity, yeah. not not to be part of a free country or to enjoy that. But then when you saw it contrasted to what you came from or what you had experienced or what you had perceived, um, we actually worked with the Royal Marines and, and some tremendous warriors and the British military is, is incredible in, in so many ways. Um, but your perception of that and your understanding of that and what you believed about that, um, I mean, where did that come from inside of you? Was it just simply, I've never seen anything like this before? Yeah, I think it's an, I think that's such a, it's a brilliant question actually, but, but I, I think I it's ask brilliant. Question you do, you often. are brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should be an actor. I should be an actor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's a number of things. I think it's, uh, I've always had an inherent desire for the truth. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that. For the that, truth. Yeah. Yeah. To pursue the truth right. wherever it might lead me. And I think that's really important. Uh, I think when you're a when you're a youngster, you don't really think about you know it's like it's that classic thing when they say you know everyone when they're you know a youngster yeah. is more more, more sure. of a liberal sure, and as sure, they get sure. older they become more conservative. I think that, that I was just thinking about my career. I was thinking about where I was going in life. Um, I always wanted to come to America, and this is one of the things that I think is vitally important and, and we miss in Hollywood is. I grew up with great American movies. Mm. I'm a, I grew up with TV shows. I grew up with um, the A Team, right? You know, right? And or, or, you know, Rocky. Yeah. Like I said, Rambo. Yeah. I remember thinking, Ugh, "We're going to win the Cold War. We got Rambo. We got Rambo. <laughs> we got Rambo." And, I, and 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 you know, when you go abroad, as as you yeah. know, as a Marine, you travel around and you're like. People love America. Yeah. They really do. Yeah. Yeah. It's the ones that I always look and I think that the people that don't love America yeah. are like the kids around. The, it's like a kid uh, who has all the toys, yeah. right? And some kids are like, hey, I'm going to go around to Johnny's house because he'll let me go and play right. with his, his this and that. And then there's a, another group of kids that go, Johnny has all these toys. I'm going to smash them all when he's not there. <laughs> I, I don't like Johnny. Right. You know, it's like, well, what do you want? And to me, I, I've always embraced success. And I think it's because... You know, I've never been jealous of anyone's success. I always think, oh, you've done well. Like, wow, that's awesome. I want you to win. Mm. And I think that's a very American thing. It's yep. not a very British thing. So uh, I think it's a combination of, of all those. And, and, and in, uh, like I said, I think inside me, I think the framers of the Constitution were just brilliant because they understood uh, the real nature, like human nature, to its both sides of it, you know, the good and the bad. Yeah. And I think for me, it, it just really made sense yeah uh, and and so when I saw it in this guy just something clicked to me that 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 everything is is right you know is is it perfect no mm. is it the best there is absolutely it is and um, uh, 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 and again following the truth you start seeing that you know th this kind of idea over here that other people peddle is a lie. Yeah. You know, uh, so that's why I try and be a little bit more vocal. I don't like actors that are political and everything, but but I certainly will defend this country. Uh, uh, this country is worth dying for. I'd die for this country. I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't die for the UK.
or anything you I wouldn't but this country and what it what it so when someone says I would die for for this country or that country or my country yeah what they're actually saying right and correct me if 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 this is not what you're saying but what they're actually saying is I would die for the principles upon which yes. the country has been built 100% or the you know the ideals of the country yeah and that's what people have a hard time understanding I think um, nationalism you know this is wading into some uh, if you territory, right? There's national, some heavy but, stuff but here, nat- man. Nationalism is not anything more or less than a pride in the foundation of the country that yeah. we live in. I'm, I'm proud of the nation. Not proud of everything the nation does. Not proud of all the people in the nation. Um, but I'm very thankful for the, as you said, the founders of the Constitution, the the, uh, the founders of our country, the writers of the Constitution, the, the folks who um, put these these ideals of freedom in place that we can enjoy as as Americans. Well, all you got to do is look and say, if not America, who? Sure. Do you, you want to give the, you want to give that responsibility to the Chinese? You want to give that responsibility? I mean, I mean, even I'm from you. <clears throat> even right now, this is just a silly little thing. I could never carry a knife when I was in the UK, and when I came, I'm like, I can carry a knife. Like I can, I can open a box. I don't have to like right. go look. I don't know it's just like a yeah. silly thing, but but those little things really mean a lot, you know. And when you come here, you go. I, I have the individual personal responsibility to be able to carry a knife or to defend myself mm. or defend my family, and that is just unbelievable. I mean, it it, it is it is so awesome. And again, I mean, I, I look and I go. We all want to leave the world a better place for our kids. I already know that my kids have got a leg up because they're, they are Americans. Mm. So, so, so why is it so hard, and you're, you're, you live in this world, for those who have a big platform and a big voice, why is it so hard for them to understand the contrast between the ideals of American freedom and the rest of the world? I, I told you a story, and I'll tell it again for those that haven't heard it. Um, I've mentioned this before. My wife is German. She's a German citizen. She has dual citizenship. Uh, we were visiting her family in Germany, I think a month ago, and took my kids to Dachau, the concentration camp right outside of Munich. Um, my older kids, you know, they're, they're nearly adults. One is an adult. So they went and, and did the whole thing and saw everything, spent several hours working through that. I took my 10-year-old and my 9-year-old with me and, and kind of showed them everything there. I wanted them to understand. Some people are like, why would you take your kids there? Because I want them to understand just how bad the world can be. And we saw the, the memorial or the, the monuments to the American soldiers that liberated Dachau, which is a great thing. It's a very small part of the whole thing, but it's, it's great. I showed that to my kids. We were walking. My 9-year-old, as we were walking, said, Dad, I, I don't know why I feel this way right now. He's like, it's emotional, right? It's, it's a feeling. This is just how he yeah. feels. I don't know why I feel this way right now, but I'm just really proud to be an American. And, you know, that was just him expressing, having seen these things and trying to process them and take them in. And, and I said, well, why is that? He said, well, these people were, were being hurt and killed and everything bad that was happening here, and Americans came and helped. Yeah. That's been the story of America, historically. Yeah. And, and yet... A nine-year-old can understand that, but supposedly the most intelligent people among us, our politicians, our actors, those who have platforms and can speak, don't understand that. Why, why can't they see that? Well, firstly, I wouldn't say the most intelligent of us are our politicians and our I, actors, to I be honest. Supposedly. Yeah, so, supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think what it is, is, is again, it's, it, when you're talking about a selfless pursuit of the truth, which also means... Um, changing your life, you know, uh, having uh, be willing enough to say I am wrong, mm-hmm. and and I have to change my life. The pursuit of the truth may take you to a point where you have to say, "Wow, I haven't been right." At yeah, this point. And, and you got to say that's one of the reasons why I say why, why my movie is called "I Am That Man," because you know I, I am that man. I, I can say that I was this person. I'm this person now, and I might be another one, you know, in in, in a few years' time, you know, given different evidence of, yeah. you know, whatever stance I have right now. But I think that if you if you do that, it's kind of like if if you feel that the United States is the best hope for the world, which I do. You don't. You, you just let it be because. It, it can, the Constitution is such, I mean, anyone that, like you said earlier on, it, 
A lot of people take it for granted. They don't understand what a gift it is until they go away. And I think this is why, you know, you, you get patriotic individuals who join the military come back even more patriotic because right. they go. Sure. It's not saying that, like, the UK is a great place. I love it. I, yep. I'm very proud of, of my heritage, where, mm -hmm. you know, where I yep. come from. I'm not ragging on it. It's just that this is better. And, and so I think that it's like anything. Why are you afraid if your way is the right way? Why are you afraid of, it's like this, this clamping down of free speech, right? Mm -hmm. Debate it. Debate it. Debate why America is right. the greatest place in the world. Right. Let, let, let's, let's, have a, let's have a discussion about it. You know, so I, I think that, that that is really important. And what you hear a lot with these politicians and with the actors is they want to quiet you. They, they don't want to debate it, right? So it, number one, it becomes, it becomes emotional. It's not logical. Uh, and then they want to shut you up. Yeah. They don't want to debate you. Yeah. Well, well, if your way is so great, then why don't you want to talk about right. it? And then you look at the places where they have shut people up. Yep. China, North Korea, Venezuela. Oh, that's it. They're all socialist, mm. communist countries. So, you know, <laughs> there's... I understand a lot of people have emotions that they want to say, we want to look after sure. this. I, sure. I get that. We sure. all do. Yeah. And I think a lot of us have the same uh, goals. We just have different ways of achieving it. Like, you know, I, I've been having a discussion with some of my friends back home, and they're like, well, what about this? What about that? And I, and I go, look, America had this, that they had a support system before Social Security right. came in, so before these not, not to get, groups yeah. And, well, yeah. and, and it was because it you looked yeah. after your own people, right. and and it was it was voluntary instead of yeah. you know, and we've seen it all throughout history is when you give the government power, not to get an, and I'm not I'm not a political person, <laughs> I'm not, but but this is well, this is isn't crucial, political, right? It's, no, it's, it's not. It's truth. It, it's truth, and it's about what this country was founded yeah. on. And I remember reading one of the things that that breaks my heart is I remember reading about when Harley Davidson they used to make um, their bikes and then they'd get a keg of beer and they'd open the keg of beer and they'd all have a drink. You can't do that now, <laughs> right? And there's something, and I said that there's something about America, like you can go and get lost. You, you can go in California, you can go 20 minutes and you can get lost in the wilderness yeah. and, and, and die in the wilderness. And there's something about that frontiersman spirit. There's something about that rugged individuality that, that makes America great. Right. You know, it's like, don't tell me what to do, right? I, I, that, that freedom is yeah. really amazing. But it's amazing that you get the guys that value that freedom will go and join organizations where they are being told what to do sure. by others. Sure. You, you know what I'm In saying? In the pursuit of that freedom. In the pursuit yeah. of that freedom. And yeah. they understand that. And I think that's exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. I think, I, I think it's amazing. And, and again, like I said, that guy, I, you know, it, it has stayed with me for the rest of my life. And it will do. And I, I tell my kids every day, I go, you can go and have ice cream because there are men that are willing to leave their children, mm -hmm. men and women, they're willing to leave their children so you can have that without yeah. the fear of being bombed or, or slaughtered or anything like that. Yeah. Don't forget it. Yeah. it. Freedom is not free. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, it, it, I, I don't know why it's so strong in me. I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure why. I think it's because I've seen freedoms erode uh, over the, you know, yeah. in Europe. Uh, and I see how great America is, and I'm like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. The, there, of course, there are things in the past that have happened, uh, and it's like anything, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you, but but it's it's been corrected. That's why there are amendments. Right. It's like it's it, it's got its way of figuring it out. And and I hate to say it, but like, if you think that way is so good. There are places you can go. You're and free do that. to go. Yeah, sure. You're free to go because there's enough people that want to come here for it to be right. exactly the way well, it we, is. We've talked even on this show about um, socialism in the context of compassion, and you know, socialism is is kind of billed as a compassionate, you know, way to to live and to govern. Um, but compassion is not weakening yourself to the point that you can't help someone else. No. The strong can help the weak. That's how it works. And again, you don't have to acknowledge that, but that's how it works. And so as Americans, if we maintain a posture of strength economically and in all of the other ways that we would talk about democratically, um, 
we're then able to continue to be the most generous people in the world, yeah. to go to places around the world that are being oppressed and provide aid and help and assistance. We can do that, but we can't do that if we weaken our posture to a place where, um, you know, we're not in that position. Well, we've seen what happens when that, when that happens. Yeah. You know, when, when America yeah. steps back, yeah. it, it becomes being cast. And look, again, I, I didn't understand that, you right. know, because when I'm, when you're in that little bubble, when right. you're a kid and, and you're out there, you're like, oh, I want to achieve this, I want to yeah, yeah. achieve that. And you're not thinking about, you know, like when you have kids, you're like, oh, this is the most important thing. Mm. How am I going to create a world that is that, that is better for this child yeah. and and all of a sudden you stop thinking about your own selfishness yeah. and start thinking about someone else and and i think that you know the other side of that is people who have faith are more uh m more predisposed to think like that yeah how has you know faith I mean? impacted your massively oh, yeah yeah in what ways well um I know actors aren't supposed to talk about faith. No, I, no, I, I don't mind. I mean, listen, I, I have seven kids. I think uh, yeah. I'm outed already. <laughs> no, I'm out. It's like, what? Catholic or Mormon? Catholic or Mormon? Catholic. Uh, hugely. I mean, you know, when, uh, I think they that it goes hand in hand, I think. That's why. With freedom. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. Uh, um, and understand that's when people go, Jesus is a socialist. No, he's, no, he isn't. Right. Um, but uh, but I think that um, I mean my my faith, my life has changed massively because of faith, and it was actually around the same time that mm. that these these things came together. I, mean, I was raised Catholic, but really squishy, and then I went away from the faith, and then I came back to it, and that that's where you kind of go, hang on a minute, this and this, the this is brilliant. They work you know, together. They, they really do. They <laughs> right. really do. Right. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you don't tithe. It doesn't mean that you don't go and do things that you, sh you know, that is a personal responsibility that I have. Uh, and that's another thing that I love, you know, yeah. that, that you can be a part of a church, but also you have your own personal responsibility sure, to sure. do what you, Absolutely. you know, you should. And that's why I love, I mean, and again, going back and reading about the history of the country, because I always used to have, you guys find this funny, right? My buddies will go, hey, Matt, it's the Fourth of July, <laughs> and I'd be like, they'd be like, because no, they don't teach you in the UK about right. the revolution. They sure. don't. And I'm well, like, it, it wasn't a win for. Uh, no, for th there's a lot videos. of those. So it's funny because, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like barbecue, like, it's, and then when you realize, like, when I read, I started reading. I'm like, I need to know what this is all about. I, I, I've, got, I've got to figure this out now. I'm staying in America. I've got to go back to the beginning. Why? Why did they fight? Oh. Okay, well, I'd be on that side, not on that side, right? Yeah, that was not right. Oh, that's why there's a Second Amendment. Right. That's why. Oh, right. the First Amendment. No one else has a right. enshrined in their constitution mm. the First Amendment. So your freedom is. It, it's it's a right. It's a right. Oh, what, didn't even have that in England. One of the things that's so fascinating to me about the American Revolution is that most of the leaders of the Revolution considered themselves very British and loyal to the crown. Yeah. They, they didn't want to leave Great Britain. They just wanted to be left alone. Yeah. That's all they wanted. Well, they took the essence of the Magna Carta right. and they said, look, this is the way it should be. It was, it was England that were like kind of yeah. undoing their own. Which is why know, we drink coffee and not tea. <laughs> That's the reason. And you know what? I got coffee in there. <laughs> it's funny because I always used to eat. I always used to drink tea and yep. now I only drink coffee. Yeah, but, but no, it's true. I mean, and you look at what I think it's impossible to look at what happened, even like when when the America, the colonialists yeah. went into New York, like like that. If they would, if the British would have stayed, it would have been a slaughter. It would have been all over, right? And you look at the, the history of the country, and you go, it is impossible, in my opinion, not to look and say that this country is blessed by God. It's impossible. You like all the things that happened when that they they won against overwhelming odds and uh, if you look at what happened with George Washington where, where, the, where they were at um, Valley Forge and they didn't have any clothes and it was freezing cold and I mean, it's just, and I've been there, I've been to, um, I've been all around there, I've been to you know where George Washington grew up and all that and, and, and to me I think he's like the, gr the greatest yep. guy in history, sure. I really do, sure. I mean it's just unbelievable, no I don't want to be a king, it's like what? <laughs> Like the, yeah. the, but but and again with Jefferson putting together, you know, I know the Madison and all that, but but Jefferson forming 
those amazing documents, and you look and you go, how do people really? People talk about France and Montmartre in in like the turn of the century, and you go, you don't understand. Like this is the greatest. The Constitution is like the greatest document, yeah. apart from the Bible. Yeah. Some of those in history, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Like the fact that all these guys came together and came up with that, it's it's staggering. And then the you know the amendments and and again people complain about slavery. Yes, I get it. But you know what? Americans rectified it. Men were willing to go and die to rectify sure. that. It's amazing. Right. It's just amazing. It's a self-correcting process if we'll trust the process that was established by the founders. It's it's stunning. Yeah. And and I think that when. If you actually engage people in a conversation about it and are knowledgeable about it, it's it opens up this whole world. I didn't know. Right. And and you like it's like the Second Amendment. I didn't get it. Yeah. So when the Americans with guns in it, oh, okay. Now I get it. Yeah. I understand. It makes sense. And and now we have a, a real time illustration of that in Venezuela. The guns are taken away. The but that's no, that, that's themselves. the wrong way. Right. That's <laughs> right. because they didn't do it right. They didn't do it right. But yeah. socialism really worked. No, but but, but it's, it's never worked anywhere. But no, it's, it's never worked anywhere. But that's because they didn't implement <laughs> it, the right, right way. Yeah. But but it, it is it is this. Um, I mean, I, I see it ebbing. You know, the, the freedoms being taken away bit by bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's <clears> there's something going on in England right in my arm town right now. The stabbings everywhere. And they're like ban knives. I'm like, if you think <laughs> the banning knives then you have to is ban the bricks answer, or what are you going to do? Ban or, cars. Yeah. So so again, it's it's an unpopular point of view, certainly yeah. in Hollywood, but it's absolutely a logical one. Yep. Yeah. It's not an emotional one. Right. Nobody, you know, wants these things to happen. But at the end of the day, I think Americans, and especially in, in I hate the term flyover country, where where you've, you, it's a rural area where where eight year olds, nine year olds, ten year olds are getting up and they're milking the cows still, sure. right? Sure. Because that's the way it works. Yep. It teaches individual personal yeah. responsibility, which is super important, um, and and it's like. I had to get my big boy pants on yep. and understand what the world was about. I didn't. I didn't know. And personal responsibility, I would say, is not only important, it is the essential element of growth and freedom. Uh, you, you talk about God blessing the United States. I, I, I believe firmly, we teach this in our program to struggling people, that personal responsibility is the way forward. Mm -hmm. It's the path forward. And the life of a person who accepts responsibility for their actions is a blessed life. Yeah. So I believe that as well in a national sense. A country who accepts responsibility not only for what they do, but for uh, the resources they've been given that can be used to help other people is a blessed country. Yeah. And God will continue to bless any nation, not just the United States, but any nation who uses the resources that they have to be a blessing to other people. Yeah. When you turn your attention or focus inward, whether you're an individual or a country, um, that's when the blessing leaves. Because now it's all about me, yeah. instead of using what I have to be a voice or a help to Well, others. one of the things that I hate more than anything is that's my truth. I'm like, uh, it, it, that should be that should be outlawed. I'm like because it, it, there there is truth. There is truth, right? It's not my truth. Right. You know, there is truth. Real so, truth is not relative. No, no, it's not. And I think you know that subjectivity is is a is a major issue. You know, because everyone's like, hey, it's right. my things. It's like no, there are objective truths, yeah. and there, you know, and I, I think that again by by being ruled by emotion, this is where a, a, a lot of societal things like kind of fall apart mm. and and um that's why i think you know when you when you join the military you got personal responsibility yep. if you don't get up and make your bed right nobody's going to make it for you yeah right there's structure but it's a personal responsibility yeah, yeah. like it's funny i said to my oldest son last night uh, um because he stayed up he stayed up a little bit late and i said listen i'm going to tell you this because you were late getting in the car this morning for me to take you to school so i want you up at six o'clock i want your bed made I want you to make the breakfast for everyone before we get up, right. and I want my coffee made, right? <laughs> and, and he was like, what? And I said, and then I will consider letting you stay up a little bit later, but you've got to do it every day for the rest of the week. He was up at six. He got all his clothes on. <laughs> the funny thing was I went up and I went, show me your shoes. And he, but he does this thing. I don't know what it is. He doesn't put his shoes and socks on. And I said, you've got to put your shoes and socks on. You've got to make your bed in the morning. That's the first thing. And I, I know that was a thing that... Um, uh, one of the, uh, I think it was McChrystal or yeah. one of them said, yeah, yeah. you know, and it, it's, or McRaven, it's, it, it is true. Yeah, McRaven, like it's, yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's, it has to, 
it has to start with that. Yep. And I, you know, there was elements of that that I wasn't brought up with. I didn't have a dad, so I didn't have anyone to, to, yep. to form, you know, my thinking about, you know, what it means to be a man and right. what it means to take responsibility. And I think it's super important, you know. There, and, there's a, uh, in, in the movie, um, I Am That Man, there's a scene in there where, you know, people need to watch it. I don't want to, you know. But there's a scene in there where you are very deliberately teaching your son um, a lesson, not not even a life lesson so much about survival and, and yeah. plants and some different things that you're yeah. talking to him about. And I watched that scene and I thought, man, that is a great picture of legacy, what it means to invest on purpose, deliberately in a generation of people that are coming behind us, giving them skills that they can use long after we're gone. Yeah. And that idea of legacy, um, Man, it jumped out. I mean, we talk about this all the time, but but watching kind of that depiction and the uh, young actor there is your son. He is, yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, that's a real thing for you, is that idea of leaving something behind that's important. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, I mean, what's, what's difficult for me for a degree, to a degree, should I say, is that I never had anyone to show me how to do it. Yeah. So I'm kind of learning on the job as a dad. Uh, and I always think like I feel sorry for my son in a way because he's the first, you know, he's, he's the one that that, that he's getting all sure. that, sure. The, the kind of learning. And he'll blame job. you for all of his oh, problems he will, later he will, on. Oh, he will, he will, he will. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think that that is a, uh, it's really important. You know, yeah. it's really important to. I know it sounds silly, but you ask most kids, they don't know how to change a plug, they don't know how to, mm-hmm. you know, use yeah. a use a saw or do this or you know protect themselves or understand like have again it's that personal responsibility yeah. is like giving it over to even who they do a great job is the police right yeah. but you know the police protect me no they turn up afterwards right. they turn up after the crimes right. happen so so I think that in I am that man I wanted to show how vitally important a parent's relationship is with their child um, both ways you know it, yeah. it works both ways and there is a legacy that you get to to teach your, your children yeah. um, and you teach them you know uh, this the scene it's not you can talk about that the scene is like he, he he's taught him how to survive yeah he wants to tell him you know which way is north south east and west and and um, and to understand that and again it's something that I never had yeah. and, and my son does because he uh, he goes to scouts Right. You know, right. and, and he, you know, he's learning knots and this, which is really, really important. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, I think it's, you know, it, you're not going to get lost in the wilderness in the UK. It's not going to happen. Right. right. It really isn't. <laughs> but you can five minutes away from here. And it so, happens. Yeah. And it happens all the time. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, you know, that installing of personal responsibility as a father. And, and I always tell him, I'm like, I don't. And by the way. When I make a mistake, I say to my son, I apologize. Yeah. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Yeah. Will you, will you forgive me That's for good. that? You know, and, and it's not like, and I always tell him, I'm like, hey, listen, and this is, I think, Parenting 101. I am not your friend. <laughs> that's good. I am yeah, not your right. friend. I am your father. You'll have a load of friends. I am your dad. And I have a goal. Yeah, exactly. And that goal is to teach you to be a man. And by the way, yeah. you will obey me. This right. isn't a debate. <laughs> and my, my friends have this great thing. I mean, I've got, like, like so I got seven kids. Like, you don't get, a, get to, like, reason with them. I see people go, oh, sweetie. No, I'm like, hey, listen, just do this because yeah. I've got to deal with the other. Oh, he's just put his, he put a knife in the socket. He's running into the road. She's up there climbing. What are you doing up there? You know, and, and it's, you know, it really is. And I think, by the way, you have four kids. Yeah. Having, if you look back, it's only like this generation, really, maybe the last generation that had one or two children. Like right. before, it was bigger families, right. and 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 that you got to fend for yourself. You know, it's yeah. like if you ain't going to eat that, then whoop, the <laughs> brother's guy. It's like there. that's yeah. it. Yeah. It's gone. And and, and I, like I love that aspect as well right. of of American life, and I, I I love the ranches and 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 horses and and the uh, all that. I think it's yeah. just incredible. It's you can still yep. be a real what well, is like a real man sure. a, and a real family and there's n- there's nothing wrong with sending your kids out to go and pick you know yep. uh, pick fruit yeah learn yeah. how to do something yeah learn yeah. how to Take do something yeah work yeah. hard I, uh, I I'll say this in in the movie we need to talk more about the movie because um, we could talk about America forever yeah I, think. But, I could I um, certainly yeah. could yeah, I yeah I could too I, um, you know the work that we do is a work that is a work of love for those who have served our country and yeah. we're thankful to be able to do it 
Um, one of the one of the things that you did in the movie, and you, so this this movie, you wrote it, you directed it, you produced it, and you starred in it. Yeah. So I don't know how all that works. I don't know if you were also <laughs> Neither filming. Neither do I. I don't know. Filming and doing Made everything else. Made the coffee. And... <laughs> but uh, one of the things you did that I, I one of the things that you did that I think a lot of movies about veterans miss, and, and that's one of them is is that relationship with your son, and even with your not estranged wife in the movie, but your wife in the movie. You're having problems. You're having marital problems. That's one of the themes. Um, but it wasn't an abandonment of your responsibility to them as a husband, as a father. And you know there were problems and there were issues and there were things that had to be dealt with. But it seems that often the 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 movies about veterans coming home from war are about what a train wreck they are yeah. and their kids only see them when they're lifting themselves out of the gutter because they can't do anything else. Um, that's not your story. Mm. Your story is there may be some problems, but you still have responsibilities. And um, man, I, I love that <laughs> as a perspective that veterans need to understand. Um, you, you've been exposed to, to, to veterans and veterans issues and veterans causes um, since Black Hawk Down, I would mm. imagine. You're in Rambo. You've been in a bunch of military stuff and continue to do that. Uh, how, did, how did you arrive at a place where you would do a movie like this about veterans and not the cliched, broken, drunk veteran who can't get his life together? Well, I think... Number one, it's you got to do something that you love, right? I right. mean, I, I, and, and what you're good at. And, you know, acting is all I've ever known. And um, I love our veterans. I, I really do. It's a genuine, you know, I'm genuinely... And that comes through in the movie, too. I mean, even your first scene is you thanking a Vietnam veteran. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just, I am, I'm, I'm just truly grateful. Yeah. And, and I th you know, I thought, you know, there's, there's a... Ma People who have profiles, like I look at what Gary Sinise does, who are, you know, he's a good friend of mine, I love him, and, and he's, he's absolutely genuine, like he has a real love uh, for what he does and, and the people that he's, the lives he's affecting, and I've, I've worked with Gary a little bit. But when you don't have that kind of profile, he's a big profile, I don't have that kind of profile, um, I looked and I said, well, how can I help veterans um, in a in a bigger way, in a, in a bigger way than myself, right? So movies very often, they affected me. So I'm like, well, how can I, it's like a force multiplier, right? So I, I can come here and do this with you um, and it's gonna get out to a lot of people. If I do a movie and I get it out to all the bases and everything, yeah. then, then it's, it's getting a wider audience right. and people might go, oh. Um, we spoke earlier and I, um, because of Black Hawk Down and because of the, the journey I was on throughout that, that period learning about America and, and who better to learn it from but sure. from veterans. Yeah. You know, I'd sit and talk with them and, and they would open up a lot to me yeah. and, and, and more, I think, than, than sometimes they would to their brothers because I was, like, safe, because I wasn't yeah. part of the team. Yeah. I was sure. kind of like in, in... I was, like, kind of in the circle <laughs> yeah. of trust, right? right? But not fully in the circle <laughs> of trust. So I, I'd listen to them and it would really pain me yeah. uh, because, you know, I'd have, I'd have guys that would be like, why did you join? Why did you join Special Forces? Because I saw the Green, Bra with, Green Berets with John, uh, John Wayne. Yeah. Or why did you become a Ranger? I watched Black Hawk Down, dude. I watched Black Hawk Down. Why did you, you know, and you see this. You see the, the, influ the, the influence that the media and Hollywood really has. And, uh, and then we went through a period of just negativity and, and you know, not necessarily that the, the the actual military was bad, but like you said, they'd come back and people would be crazy. They'd be like, uh, you know, drinking all the time, right, taking right. drugs, and, uh, and and that wasn't my experience with the majority of people that I, I met. Of course, there were cases where, you know, people come back and have a little bit more sure, trouble. Sure, people do struggle. They, they do. Sure. They yeah. do. Uh, and I thought, you know what? This needs to be the, the, the story of a guy coming back that I know needs to be told. And I got told, by the way, I sent the script around and people were like, oh, I want this part, I want it. Why don't you go crazy at the end and kill everyone? I'm like, you're missing the point. <laughs> and the, the, the funny thing is, is I knew that by making this movie that I couldn't trust, like, when we did Black Hawk Down, there were a few people that went out and they bad-mouthed the Rangers. And I'm like, there's no way that's happening with me. I, so I'm like, oh, 
okay, I've got to play the role. Because I know yeah. uh, it wasn't yeah, an yeah. ego thing at all. Yeah. It was like if... <clears throat> control the story. Control the story. Yeah. So some guy isn't coming out and going, yeah, I played that role, but they're all kind of... Yeah, right. So, right, so right. I'm like, okay, well, I'll play the role so then I can go and talk to other people. Maybe I can open the door that, that someone who might be thinking of doing something yeah. changes his mind because for whatever yeah. reason. So... so um, I wrote the script, I then sent it to a bunch of friends of mine mm. and said, what do you think? What do you want in this? What would you like to have in this script? And I listened to them, which yeah. is like, even even a friend of mine, a DJ Crusoe, who, who watched the movie, and he gave me some notes, and I implemented the notes. He went, you implemented the notes? I said, well, what? well I asked you for <laughs> your, the your advice. You. Like, you know. Um, so, for example, the opioids. Uh, I spoke to a friend of mine. He's like, I really like to tackle an opioid, the opioid problem. And none of these things are popular, mm. uh, certainly not in a, for a distribution in yep. Hollywood. Like, they, they don't want to see people... Like win. They 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 want it to like say they want it to be a train wreck, and I'm like it's it's not that way. You know, if you have a, 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 a someone who's in the military coming home, and he knows he's going to be deployed again, he's got to be on his game. Yeah. Right. So if he's got to be on his game and he knows that he's got to be at the top physically, yeah. So he might be spending more time out the gym, at the range, doing this, doing that. That takes away from family life. Mm. But he's not doing it to be away from his family right, right. he's doing it because he wants to come back to his family sure. because he wants to be sure. here how does that impact is he sometimes you know and from the family side of things just trying to have a look you know maybe you're not listening a little bit because and it's understandable you're a little bit more driven so you know i also had a guy you know the, the reaction to the film has been really amazing because you know there's a scene where they're talking about music mm -hmm. and, uh, and and one guy came up to me and he said my son never got to know what music I like because I was pretty much deployed the yeah, whole time. Right. And um, it's these little things that civilians don't understand, they don't get. So I decided I want to make a movie for veterans that will resonate with veterans that they might just be able to say if they're going through a bad time, watch this and just just see a little bit more of my point of view to give hope you know what I mean yeah. and, it, and it is hopeful it is really hopeful because you know guys that I see guys and girls that don't quit anything in their lives professionally will sometimes quit that because it's too much of a jumble there is a way through yeah. you know and certainly you know I've I've seen it and I just wanted to to as well for for people that come back to say it's okay yeah you know, it's okay yeah. feeling this way. It's okay having these issues. Yeah. We can work it through. Don't be ashamed of it. You, you know, you, you're going to be in the same way that, you know, in my silly little way, in my little journey, you know, I went from being a certain kind of person and, and hopefully I grew and I hope to continue growing. I'm by no means, you know, a, a perfect dad or a perfect person. It's a lifelong process. It, it, sure. it is, yeah. but but a lot of people don't, like, they kind of beat themselves up about yeah. it and just to, just to yeah. say, I am that man or I am that woman. Right, right. I was there, I'm here, I don't know where I'm going to be, but that's all right. Yeah. You know, you, you can you can live in that, and I, I wanted to do that with the movie in a kind of entertaining yeah, package. Sure. Yeah. You know, and and it's funny because I'll show it to some civilians, and they will never get what veterans get out of it. Right. And I'm like, that's kind of right. cool, actually. <laughs> I didn't make it for right. you. Right. You know, I didn't make it that's so good. the guy could go crazy at the end and shoot yeah, the yeah, place yeah, yeah, up yeah, yeah, like yeah. Rambo. You know, yeah. not dissing. <laughs> This is my guy, but I did save his life from Rambo right, sure, form. Just sure. like, but you know what I'm saying? So the, <laughs> but, watch it. but that was the, the point of it. And I, it was a roll of the dice because I knew that doing it a different way would get it sold more. You know what I mean? Right. To, a more commercial value. Because, because, it, because right? yeah, what, what people don't understand is you have to get, like, for example... Having me play the lead role is not going to get a big, as big a um, release as it is if it was Brad Pitt or you know one of these other guys. But you know, me and my business partner, we just said, look, who, who actually her husband is a marine. Oh yeah. Um, you know, we said, no, this is what we're going to do because the, 
it's more important that we're going to hopefully save lives or marriages or whatever than any amount of money that's going to come out. I find it fascinating. I, I mentioned this to you a little bit, that most movies that you'd think would appeal to veterans have nothing to do with veterans. Yeah. <laughs> and most veterans don't want to watch them. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. All these, these you know, this is the veteran coming home movie. Who's that written for? Because yeah, it wasn't written for the veterans. Well, do you know what happens? We, 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 I have a, um, I've had many conversations with this with writers and because what happens is writers don't go out and speak to yeah, veterans right. what they do is they watch a movie and they watch a tv show yeah. and they go that's the way it is yeah. and then they write it and you're like well that isn't the way it right. is so now you've rewritten this or written this piece and it's even less like what it's like what it, so here's Again, I'm, I'm giving away too much of the movie. Watch the movie. I don't mind. You, Watch you, the movie. You can give little, little what are the tweets, things so. that I expected? So I watched it yesterday. I every there were like several points where I expected this to happen and it didn't happen. And I got to the end of it, I'm like, I'm really happy that didn't happen. <laughs> Was the flashback scene? Yeah. Every movie about every veteran since Apocalypse Now or whatever has had this massive flashback scene, right? You didn't have a flashback no. scene. You know why? Because most people don't experience real flashbacks. No, they don't. I mean, it happens, but it happens rarely, even in the clinical uh, clinical world. Um, that's a very specific, very narrow, very small group of people who would have experienced real flashbacks where they find themselves in that spot. And he didn't do that. It was a story about a guy transitioning out of the military trying to find his way. He's moving forward. Right. I mean, and that's the... And that's, that's what most guys can resonate yeah, with. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, people just want to just get on with their lives and, and there might be obstacles that come. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, I think what a lot of people do is they want to go back and show the reasoning and yeah. it's this really yeah. heavy thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's not. You know, I mean, I, I was... <laughs> sometimes it's not. You know, yeah. sometimes people yeah, are like, okay, right. well, I went and I did that and I'm moving forward now. Yeah. But, you know, they might say, I miss the brotherhood. Yeah. Which he says... So brotherhood was a huge theme in, in yeah. this. Where, where did that come from for you? I mean, there were several points where you, you made that very clear, like the brotherhood's super important. Well, it's because I'm dead jealous of it, because yeah. I don't have that. Mm. And I think it's a real amazing thing that you guys have that most people don't have. And, you know, and, and, and you know, I, I see it and I just think it's the greatest thing. You know, I went to, uh, we went and we showed it at um, Fort Bragg, and a friend of mine got in the car, Matt James, and he's a... a he had a TBI, he got hit by a, a, an IED. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you look at his Humvee, it's like, I don't know how you survived. And he's an amazing, amazing person. And we went, we went out for a drive. I think we went for breakfast and we get in the car and there was a guy in the front and he was a, he was a Lyft driver and they started talking and he was airborne as well. And it was like, They'd been friends uh, sure, forever, sure, yeah. and I'm just—I was actually welling up because I'm like, this is something that I guess years ago we used to have in our small communities. And at the end of it, I went, "Hey, do you want to come? Do you want to hmm. come to the movie?" And he was like, "Yes, sir." And I'm like, again, I'm like, "You called me <laughs> sir? Like this is so humbling." Right. And so he turns up. Yeah. to the movie yeah. and he's got brought, brings his wife and and Matt James said you can and he, we, before anyway he gets out the car they hug it and the guy goes can I have a hug and it sounds like lame but he he gets out yeah, and he hugs yeah, him yeah. and he and and he went most people don't know about stuff like this I yeah. went that is the greatest thing that is the greatest thing and after the film he came up to me and he said when you come back to North Carolina, you stay with us. We've got a bedroom. You've got to, right, you got know, to not right. staying in a hotel. And it's just this this incredible community. And I just I wish that everyone could experience it. I wish yeah. everyone could see. It's like I say, it's not all great. It's yeah. not. It's not. Of everything isn't yeah. always yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But from what I've seen, that that brotherhood is is unbelievable. And I wanted to make that clear in the movie yeah. i'm glad that it resonated with you because i think that <clears throat> that most people don't understand and, and 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 again it's that thing where you come out and you're like who's got my six like yeah. you know that that guy's he didn't care and yeah. and what you know when you're part of a unit you yeah. know part of a team you know you know you guys have got you even right. if you don't like each other even right. if that guy annoys you yeah. Yeah. you know he, he he's got your back at the end of the day yeah there's a brother yeah, and, there. and i see that i see that all the time and it's uh, you know as as someone who has come like i come from a foreign country come to america i have my family i have no family i have no family here apart from my own family 
and it's, it's kind of isolating. I look around and I see, you know, the Marine family, the Army family, yeah. the Navy family, the, my buddy who's, who's a West Point grad, you know, he's, he's oh, I've got the, I can call him up, he's a West Point, don't right. worry. It's yeah. just yeah. amazing. So with that brotherhood, and I think, uh, I, I don't know if it was intentional or unintentional, but it was certainly there. Um, one of the things that comes with that brotherhood is a responsibility, mm -hmm. right? And I think it was intentional because it, it resonated in a couple spots. Um, you know, you're talking about the op opioids. That was a very small part, but you know, kind of your perspective on that was, I need to stop this problem here because it's killing people over yeah. there. So I have a responsibility to people I don't know yeah. to deal with this here because of brotherhood. Um, you know, there's a character in, in the movie that kind of comes alongside of you and, and maybe redirects you a little bit. Um, and there's a brotherhood there. It opens up with a scene of brotherhood. Uh, but there's a responsibility that comes along with that brotherhood too. And I think in the veteran community, and, and again, you're a student of this, in the veteran community, that's something we also need to understand. That brotherhood is not just, um, you know, getting behind the wild and crazy behavior or covering for someone who's who's doing things they shouldn't do. Uh, often the brotherhood is standing up and saying, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Or I'm going to get you from, from there, a broken place, to where you need to be. I'm going to help you get to where you go. And, uh, man, that's that's huge. It's powerful. If you use that it's, brotherhood to help other people. It's the greatest love for another man that you yeah. can have, right? I mean, it, nobody wants to go and confront someone when right. they're doing something right. bad. But but that's real love. It, it, it really is. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's doing the uncomfortable things. It's like, like I said, the pursuit of truth. Yeah. It's really uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. You know, because if you don't know it, you might have been living your life a certain way or doing things a certain way. And, and, and then you go, oh, man. That's wrong. Yeah. Like, I've been misguided. But again, you can say, I didn't know any better. Sure. Uh, sure. I'm moving forward. Or I knew better. I just wasn't strong enough. It's all okay. What yeah. what matters is how you move forward. And and again, yeah, no, I mean, it, it was very intentional. And, and part of that is, you know, when you see that, that particular scene, it's like that ranger was going to die for me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't know who I was. Yeah. There's there's hundreds of people that hate what he stands for. Yeah. He's still going to die for them. Yeah. He's still the 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 prevailing uh, notion of freedom yeah. around the world. There are there are people that understand it and do it and are willing to sacrifice themselves, their lives, their family. You know, even you know even the family life that you know we talk about for people that they will never know. And most likely will never appreciate, they will never appreciate what these guys are doing yeah. or, or even hate them for yeah. it. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. I mean, it really it. is. It really is amazing. And and you just got to get outside of your own head. Yeah. And this is why I'm trying to talk to people back home in the UK to just look a little bit bigger. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the most intelligent but, person in the world. It's yeah. it's not like some, yeah. you know, it's just, a, it's actually the most fundamental yeah basic instinct yeah. in us, right? Right. Leave me alone, right? right. <laughs> right. Be free. And, and right. if you aren't free, we're going to do something. And again, I didn't understand that. Mm. I'll be like, you know, America's doing this, what they're there, they're this, they're there. And people go, oh, America's the world police. No, no, they want freedom and they want freedom for you. Yep. They've got it. Yep. They could shut down shop and go, right. thanks a lot, guys. Right, 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 Off right. you go. Yeah. We're okay. Yep. You know, they could Wakanda it, right? They could like. But if you value freedom for real, then you want other people to have of it. Of course. Yeah, that's right. Um, if there was one thing, there's probably many, but if there was one thing you wanted to communicate through this film, you said, you said the audience is veterans, those who have served. If there's one thing you wanted to communicate to them, what would that be? When they walk away from the film, they were entertained, you know, they, they liked some of the characters. Um, when they wake up in the middle of the night thinking about that movie they just watched, what do you want them to be thinking about? That's a great question. Uh, I think... I think that there's always hope yeah. and to talk, yeah. you know, because it's okay for the ones that, that see it as whether it be entertaining or, or whatever, but, but I think a lot of people don't feel like there's any way out of their situation. And there's always, always. there's always a way. Yeah. So I think that, you know, reach out, see, accept where you are, who you are, and it's okay. It's okay to have all those things, you know, to, to feel, 
you know, down, to feel yeah. shame, yeah. to feel all those things. That's all okay, right? It's all okay. It's and not normal. It's natural. It's normal. We all do, yeah. you know, on, yeah. on different levels. Even British actors. Even British <laughs> weirdo actors like me, you know. But but it's true, you know. Yeah. I think that, I think that um, but guys, there there are higher stakes with you guys. You know, there are higher mm. stakes. I think for the for the majority of the time. Yeah. Uh, our things are like, oh, I feel re really bad because I, I had soy in my coffee this morning. Yeah, you know, right. it's not like, hey, you know, I lost a brother. Yeah. You know, uh, but it, it's it's to be okay with who you are, mm -hmm. okay to feel all those things, uh, and to talk to somebody yeah. because you'd be surprised. You know, he feels the same. He feels the same. She feels the same. She feels, the, yeah. you know, and and just to talk about it. It, it seems really squishy in that, but but it's it's really true. No, I think it's, it's absolutely true. There is yeah. always hope. Yeah, yeah. If my if my movie can can help one person, I would have achieved my objective yeah. on it. That's awesome. So your life is bigger than a movie, um, bigger than your acting career. If your life could communicate one thing, your seven kids, to your wife, to people who are watching from the outside, if you couldn't make another movie, but your life communicated. What do you want your life to communicate to people? You said a lot of things that are really important today. Um, maybe we'll just show this at the end of your life. Yeah, we'll well, show this episode uh, uh, where you talk about some really important stuff, but what do you want your life to communicate? Because obviously you're driven by more than just money and fame and you know all that and you know you have that, but clearly that's not the only thing that's driving yeah, no. you. No, it's not. Um, I think that there are you have to search in life for what really, what, what is your purpose in life? Yeah. And there is a purpose that we all have. Yeah. And and it is a bigger purpose than you. Uh, and um, yeah, I want to I want to leave the world a better place for my kids and for the rest of yeah. of society. Yeah. And uh, I, look, I mean, my own personal thing is by knowing and loving God. Mm. I think that is the, the, the not to be too. Yeah, no, you know, I, I, I agree with you. Is, yeah. is, is I our, 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 to be perfect to our design as human beings is to know and to love God. And I'm a broken, flawed individual that's trying my best to do that. And uh, and I again, I accept all the all the things about me that are imperfect, and sure. there are a lot of them. Mm. But uh, I'm striving to be the best man that I can be. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. And leaving that pattern for your kids. That's incredible. Hopefully. Man, thanks man, we've had a great conversation. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Um, people need to watch the movie, I Am That Man, and uh, dist distribution will continue to grow, um, of course. Uh, but where can people follow you? And that's probably the best way to keep in touch and inform um, what's going on. On Twitter, on Twitter, I'm like at Matthew. I'm not very good at this stuff because I hate <laughs> it. I'd rather not do any. But uh, Matthew D. Marsden is my Twitter. Matthew D. <clears throat> Marsden. Matthew D. Marsden. Yep. And my, my website's MatthewMarsden.com. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's, that's in Facebook. I've got a Facebook page, Matthew Marsden. Yeah. And. Um, and uh, I am that man. Movie is the the other one. Okay. But we'll, we'll I'll I'll get you. Awesome. That. We'll get all that, and we'll uh, we'll include it with the show. And uh, man, it's awesome. Hopefully, we can get you back. Do it again. I'd love it. Thank all right. you. Thank you for having me. So, for everyone that's watching, thank you for watching. Tremendous discussion, and uh, appreciate you watching on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, maybe you're listening um, on Mojo Five O or somewhere else. Um, go to our YouTube page. Check us out. You can subscribe there. That's really important. But beyond subscribing, hit that bell, and that will notify you when new episodes come online. Every Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, we have an episode come online. If you're listening on Mojo Radio, that is Saturday mornings at 7 Pacific Standard Time. And uh, anywhere you can get your podcast, you can listen to this as well. So thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.